So now it's a pleasure to have the second talk by Oleg Lisovi on the Fredon determinant and Microsoft type representations for isomonotromic tau functions. Yes, so uh, thank you very much, first of all, for invitation to this conference. Um, I would like to discuss uh, uh, Friedholm determinant and some combinatorial representations for uh, isomonotromic tau functions. So uh, this subject has a long history, which started probably um, in the late 70s from the papers of McCoy, Wu, and Tracy on the two-dimensional Ising model, and then uh, uh, the papers by uh, Satam, <coughs> Jimbo, and Miva on holonomic quantum fields. So uh, the basic question uh, that I want to ask is, uh, so uh, how can we solve uh, monogamy preserving deformation equations explicitly? And uh, some step in this direction was done uh, a few years ago in uh, uh, 2012, when <laughs> it was observed uh, that uh, uh, the Penlever 6 tau function, so Penlever 6 is the simplest instance of the isomonotomy equation, which corresponds to uh, Fuchsian systems with uh, uh, four regular singular points and uh, rank two. So this Penlever 6 tau function, the general solution happens to be a Fourier transform of C equal to one uh, Virasora conformal block. Uh, so you see on this picture, uh, uh, so the uh, four external legs of a uh, conformal block, they correspond to four parameters in the equation. And uh, so the equation is of second order and two integration constants appear as the internal dimension and uh, Fourier momentum. So this uh, sigma and eta are actually uh, Darbu coordinates on the uh, character variety of the four punctured sphere. Well, <coughs> so uh, next, uh, this uh, uh, observation, which was a little bit uh, experimental, uh, was uh, well understood in the framework of uh, Liouville conformal field theory and uh, moreover generalized to an arbitrary number of punctures, but still uh, we had to stay in rank two. So on the isomonodromic side, uh, this corresponds to considering Garnier system. And uh, uh, the basic idea to prove uh, this correspondence between isomonodromy and uh, conformal field theory is just uh, to consider uh, conformal blocks, Urasora conformal blocks with degenerate insertions and then compute their quantum monodromy. So it happens that this uh, quantum monodromy is operator valued in the sense that it contains the shifts of uh, intermediate momenta by, uh, so translations by, let's say, B, parameter, <coughs> you will parameter B. And uh, when you uh, have central charge equal to one, uh, it is possible to uh, diagonalize simultaneously the, uh, these translations together with uh, the essentially diffusion coefficients and uh, uh, obtain thereby uh, the usual S SL2, C uh, SL2C value at monodromy instead of operator one. And uh, then this formula for the tau function uh, is a consequence. On the other hand, uh, so thanks to this uh, uh, AGT correspondence, which was mentioned in uh, previous talks, so we have an identification between conf Virasora conformal blocks in particular and uh, instanton partition functions in some uh, supersymmetric uh, uh, gauge theories. And the important thing is that uh, uh, such partitions f functions uh, have been computed explicitly. So they have explicit representations. And that means that we have, uh, in principle, general solution of uh, uh, Penlever 6 and the uh, uh, Garnier system in terms of uh, uh, certain combinatorial sums over tuples of partitions. And so now the question uh, that I want uh, to, to, to ask is, uh, so we have to understand this uh, combinatorial structure of isomodromic tau functions 
staying within uh, the theory of uh, monodromy preserving deformation. And then, if possible, try to, to generalize it to higher rank genus and possibly go <coughs> beyond linear quivers. And this also may, ha may give some insight uh, on CFT and gauge theory. Well, so uh, to start, uh, uh, instead of considering a Fuchsian system, I would uh, rather work within uh, Riemann-Hilbert setup. So two basic ingredients uh, to set up a Riemann-Hilbert problem are, first of all, a contour, an oriented contour, which consists of a finite number of uh, smooth uh, arcs uh, on a, some Riemann surface that can intersect transversally. And a uh, second ingredient is the jump uh, matrix uh, on the contour, which relates uh, the uh, boundary values of the solution uh, on its positive and negative sides. So in uh, our problem, so uh, I, I restrict myself to Fuchsian case. So in our problem, the contour uh, consists of uh, uh, some set of circles which are denoted here by gamma, and uh, uh, some segments uh, joining uh, different circles. And the second part is a uh, jump matrix. So in order to define it, we have to prepare some data. Uh, first of all, we need uh, a set, a collection of diagonal uh, non-resonant uh, n by n matrices, uh, which I denote theta. So later on, they will play the role of uh, local uh, monodromy exponents for the, for the fundamental matrix solution of our Fuchsian system. And uh, then we also need uh, 2n, so small n uh, is supposed to be the number of uh, regular singularities. So we need 2n connection matrices which uh, satisfy some consistency relation. So these connection matrices, they uh, contain uh, the rest of monodromy data, such as this uh, Darbu coordinate sigma and eta. Okay, and then uh, jump matrix uh, uh, is defined by this. So I, ah, I have a point. Right. So the jump matrix is defined by these uh, formulas. So basically, uh, uh, what do we have? We have constant jumps here on the segments. And uh, we have some uh, simple power-like jumps on the circle. And they are supposed to do the following. So uh, the constant jumps uh, like this, they encode the monodromy. And the uh, uh, non-constant jumps, they encode the singular behavior of uh, uh, the fundamental matrix solution phi. So indeed, if we define phi in this way, be as a solution of Riemann-Hilbert, then uh, we can easily see that this uh, phi has only piecewise constant jumps on the positive real axis. Therefore, this matrix is uh, neuromorphic uh, uh, on the whole Riemann sphere uh, with poles only possible at this, uh, uh, these points, the cen centers of circles. And then we can uh, uh, easily check that, in fact, uh, all uh, poles are of uh, first order and uh, the residues of this connection are given, uh, are related to the solution of Riemann-Hilbert problem in this way. Well, and then, <coughs> so the fundamental matrix solution, of course, realizes a monodromy representation of the fundamental group of the n-punctured sphere. So this uh, monodromy representation is generic, uh, although we have to assume some uh, um, uh, we have to put some genericity conditions uh, on our parameters, in particular on these matrices 1 to k, which are the products of uh, consecutive uh, individual monodromies. Well, now, <coughs> now to this initial uh, uh, complicated uh, n-point Riemann-Hilbert problem, uh, we will associate uh, uh, n minus 2 uh, simpler three-point Riemann-Hilbert problems, uh, which are uh, somehow inspired by the Pence decomposition of uh, our initial n-punctured sphere into n minus two pairs of Pence and n minus two annually. 
So uh, this tense decomposition is uh, reflected uh, in this Riemann-Hilbert sub setup in the following way. So basically, I uh, factor out uh, these uh, constant jumps on parts of the segments by multiplying, by redefining my fundamental, uh, my solution of Riemann-Hilbert. So the corresponding jumps on these new circles, which I introduce, they will mimic uh, the behavior at a regular singularity, which is characterized by uh, this uh, monodromy matrix, products of monodromy matrices. And then, uh, so uh, what will we do? Now, to every pair of pens, we will associate a certain uh, uh, space of uh, functions living on the boundary, not, uh, uh, more precisely on the left and on, on the uh, right uh, circle on the previous picture. So if, for example, you consider this, uh, the, the pair of pens associated to uh, um, to this Riemann-Hilbert contour shown here. So then we will uh, consider spaces of functions living on this circle, interior circle, and outer circle here. <coughs> this, uh, uh, moreover, we will make the spaces, uh, so these functions will be vector valued, so the n corresponds to the rank of the Riemann-Hilbert problem. And the elements of these uh, spaces HK uh, will be written in this form. Uh, the convenience of this form will, be, will become clear uh, on the next slide. And next, uh, we will define an operator uh, on HK uh, by this formula. So this is called uh, Plumel operator. So uh, what can be said about it? Well, first of all, it is rather clear this, uh, that this operator is a projection. And uh, so it projects, uh, roughly speaking, the functions on the left and right boundary onto the functions that can be continued uh, inside uh, the pair of pants as a solution of the corresponding Riemann-Hilbert problem and outside as a holomorphic function. Now, uh, uh, so you see that uh, uh, this uh, part of uh, the elements of HK is in the kernel, and uh, so the map, uh, the operator P, acts uh, on this component uh, of elements of HK in this way, and uh, the operator A, B, C, and D, so they uh, have some, uh, uh, some explicit form, and what should be emphasized here that, so this Psi K that I use is the solution of the three-point Riemann-Hilbert problem uh, corresponding to uh, appropriate pair of pens. Next. Next, I introduce a total space made out of these uh, 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 spaces associated to different tr uh, trinions. So it admi admits a, a kind of canonical splitting uh, into spaces uh, H plus a, a, and H minus. Uh, so for example, if you uh, look at this formula, H2 in minus corresponds to uh, the space of, fun uh, space of functions on the inner circle of the trinian number two with only uh, negative Laurent uh, components, okay? And then out of these previous projections uh, given by Plumel operators, we uh, cook up an operator on H uh, given by this direct sum. So this is made of three-point solutions. On the other hand, uh, we can define another uh, projection acting on H using the true solution of the true uh, endpoint Riemann-Hilbert problem. So this is indeed again a projection. And it is very easy to show that uh, uh, both operators uh, have the same image. This is basically uh, related to the fact that inside each pair of pens they have the same jumps. The, the three-point uh, Riemann-Hilbert problem solution and the n-point Riemann-Hilbert problem solution have the same jump. So this can be thought then as a, uh, this uh, common image 
can be thought of this uh, as subspace of functions that can be continued out inside all trinions with appropriate monodromy and singular behavior. And now, uh, if you vary the positions of uh, singular points, uh, so this uh, space will vary as well, and uh, so it will uh, uh, this trace a trajectory, some trajectory in the infinite di dimensional Grassmannian of H, which is defined with respect to the, the splitting. And uh, uh, actually, each of these subspaces can be uh, identified with uh, this number of copies of uh, uh, functions on the circle. Uh, so this uh, fa factor corresponds to the number of uh, annually, and uh, this factor corresponds to the rank of the Riemann-Hilbert problem. Well, <coughs> uh, so, so far, fundamental matrix solution didn't appear yet. Uh, neither did the tau function, but, but uh, it will come soon. So for that, we will need to introduce the restrictions of uh, previous operators to the space H plus and uh, define uh, such a combination. So in fact, the first of uh, these operators is invertible. This is very easy to see. And uh, the second uh, operator is generically invertible. Generically means uh, uh, outside Malgrange divisor, the so-called Malgrange divisor. And it is... Uh, Real, uh, relatively easy to show that uh, there, there exists a basis of the space uh, H plus uh, in which the inverse of this operator has an explicit form. Uh, uh, so it is a block uh, operator whose entries are themselves blocks given by this Plumel operator constructed out of three-point solutions. Uh, and now the tau function, uh, so I want to define the tau function associated to this uh, Riemann-Hilbert problem that I am considering as the determinant of the, this inverse of L. And the theorem is that uh, the tau function defined in this way is uh, related uh, in a very simple way to the conventional uh, Jimbo, Miva, and Ueno tau function given by this differential one form. Uh, so already here you can probably recognize uh, some uh, CFT inspired notation. So basically the prefactor that you get here is the leading uh, term when all of the uh, singular points go to zero. An example. So for n equal to four, which contains as a special case uh, uh, so the Fuchsian system uh, associated to Penlever 6. So for n equal to 4, uh, the Jimbo Miva Ueno isomonodromic tau function is actually a Friedholm determinant uh, of this form. The operators A and D are constructed, uh, so they have these kernels, which are made of three-point solutions associated to uh, this left or interior trinion and right or exterior tree. Now, what is important is that, uh, well, when you are able to find these three-point solutions explicitly, so uh, immediately this gives you an explicit formula for tau. And this is the case, uh, for example, in rank two. So in rank two, psi r and psi l are, gi are given by some hypergeometric functions. So indeed, this gives you an explicit Friedholm determinant which uh, contains, uh, for example, as a special case, uh, the hypergeometric kernel uh, solution of Penlevé 6, which was found by Alyosha Baradin and Dave. So uh, this hypergeometric kernel then uh, contains as various special cases uh, other classical kernels arising in, say, random matrix theory, like Airy kernel, sine kernel, and so on. So this is uh, somehow included in this picture as a special case. But now we want to do more. Uh, in addition to establishing this Friedholm determinant representation, I would like to compute this uh, uh, type of uh, combinatorial expansions of my tau function. And for that, it is convenient to uh, represent 
the uh, elements of uh, this uh, spaces uh, of functions on circles in the Fourier basis. So now uh, our operators will become infinite matrices. So it is convenient to label the indices by half integer numbers. So you see that uh, so these different operators, A, B, C, and D, they will act between functions uh, uh, which can live on the same uh, uh, annuli, uh, annulus or on different annuli. So the first case corresponds to A and D. The second case, different annuli, corresponds to B and C. And uh, uh, so what uh, are we going to do? Uh, uh, we are going to do very, some very basic thing. So uh, we, we will expand our determinant uh, into a series. Uh, so this is the so-called von Koch formula. So when you have a, uh, some set X, uh, which uh, can be infinite in principle, so the determinant of identity plus A is given by a sum over all subsets of uh, X of uh, principal minors obtained by restricting uh, uh, initial matrix A to uh, uh, the corresponding subset. So in our case, uh, uh, the, uh, this uh, matrix A will be K, uh, the, the, uh, the operator appearing in the Fredholm representation. And uh, the elements of X are multi-indices which encode a lot of data. So first of all, K itself is made out of blocks A, B, C, and D. And then each uh, of these blocks A, B, C, and D itself, it has, first of all, Fourier indices, uh, uh, this half uh, integer Fourier indices, and then also co color indices, which this correspond to internal structure of the, our Riemann-Hilbert problem. Uh, so it will be convenient uh, for the following to combine Fourier and color indices into just one index, uh, which will be then living in this set N. And uh, unordered subsets uh, 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 of uh, such indices will be uh, later denoted by I on or J. And uh, uh, a mnemonic rule is that for, so the elements of I will have positive, will correspond to uh, positive uh, uh, Fourier momenta and the elements of J uh, will have negative Fourier momenta. And uh, given a matrix, uh, um, uh, indexed by this set, we will denote by uh, Mij its restriction uh, to the corresponding row, rows and columns. So let us now try uh, just uh, to uh, understand what is the form of this principal minors of K in our case. So this is uh, the structure when you write it explicitly. So this is the first block of uh, K and then uh, you have all the others. So it is uh, clearly seen that if you permute uh, like neighboring odd and even block rows, then the matrix uh, that you get will be block diagonal, okay? And it, it also becomes clear that this, the determinant of this matrix uh, will vanish unless uh, this balance condition is satisfied uh, for all K. So that means that, so basically you start from this block of uh, the minor, you show that I1, uh, the, the number of elements in I1 is equal to the number of elements in J1, otherwise the determinant is zero, and then you, you continue and you obtain the balance condition for, for all the other blocks. And in that, in that way, uh, this uh, generic, uh, this, this principal minor, more precisely, the non-vanishing principal minor, factorizes into a product of um, some uh, more elementary uh, determinants of this form. Uh, and uh, as a consequence, we obtain the following structure of the tau function. So the tau, the, uh, this Fredholm determinant which gives uh, the, the tau function is a sum with respect to all balanced uh, configurations of uh, some uh, products of this 
elementary determinants uh, associated to different pairs of pens. So probably uh, the, the structure already becomes a bit more uh, familiar. Uh, and uh, to make it even more familiar, let us now <coughs> uh, describe this set of balanced uh, configurations, IJ, in terms of Maya diagrams and charged partitions. So uh, uh, just to recall, uh, so a Maya diagram is a map uh, from uh, the half integer lattice to just minus one and one, which is subject to the condition that uh, so uh, uh, m of p is plus one for uh, all but finitely many positive half integers and uh, the reverse for negative half, half integers. So this, um, uh, this uh, uh, values of p for which uh, the map m is different from plus or minus one are referred to as positions of uh, particles and holes. And uh, the charge of M is the difference between the uh, number of particles in the diagram and the number of holes. Now, so <coughs> maybe it is even better to uh, uh, show a diagram. So here, uh, the half integer uh, lattice is directed in a uh, in this way. So the positions of particles, so these are the positions of uh, white circles uh, on the left. So you have this one half, three half, seven half, and uh, this. And the positions of holes are the positions of uh, black circles on the right. So you have two holes with this momentum. And uh, the charge of the diagram may be, uh, the charge of a Maya diagram, in this case, of course, it is equal to two. Now, uh, let me return uh, to my indices i, k, and g, k, which are the indices of, uh, 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 which I take uh, in order to compute my principal minor. So once again, uh, in i, k, uh, the generic element of IK will uh, uh, contain a Fourier momentum, which can be a momentum of, of a particle or a momentum of a hole, and uh, it contains also color, which runs from one to n. <coughs> now, there is another useful con combinatorial correspondence, uh, which uh, allows to interpret uh, this Maya diagrams in terms of uh, charged partitions, that is uh, uh, partitions with assigned uh, integer numbers. So uh, the idea is already explained in this picture. So basically you start very far uh, uh, here and then every time when you have a black, black circle uh, at the bottom, you draw the line, uh, a segment directed to uh, southwest, uh, no sorry, to southeast, and then every time when you have a white circle, you draw a segment which is directed northeast, and uh, uh, the uh, polygonal line obtained in this way uh, defines you the outer boundary uh, of a certain Young diagram. And uh, uh, the charge of the Maya diagram appears in this picture as a sine distance between the diagram and this northeast uh, axis. So in this way, the, uh, uh, the n-tuples of uh, Maya diagrams with zero total charge, so the zero total charge comes from this balance condition. So this set uh, is in one-to-one -one correspondence with the uh, 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 n-tuples of young, young diagrams cross the a n one minus one root lattice. So in this way, the previous formula uh, uh, can be rewritten in a yet more familiar form. So the Friedholm determinant is given by this multiple sum, which, uh, uh, so this uh, in the Penlevé six case corresponds to the Fourier transform. This corresponds uh, to the uh, sum over tuples of partitions in uh, Nekrasov instanton partition functions. 
And uh, so this elementary uh, determinants can be constructed from matrix elements of PML operators in Fourier basis. And uh, it happens that in rank two, they are given by Cauchy matrices and they are explicitly computable. And so we end up uh, with uh, very explicit combinatorial uh, formula for the tau function. So I think I have to stop. So thank you very much. So we have time for quick questions again. So question would be with coffee. Coffee is next door. Thank you.